Hello. First tonight, 11 people have been injured in a crash involving a fire engine in Luton. A family of five and a number of firefighters were among the injured. It happened on Farley Hill near the town centre just before nine o'clock this morning. A taxi and a car were also involved. Some roads were sealed off for a number of hours. This report from Debbie Tubby includes some shocking and exclusive pictures from CCTV. This fire engine was responding to an emergency. It didn't expect to end up in one. The seconds before the crash were also caught on CCTV. Let's see it again. Watch the black taxi. Although the lights are green, he stops. For whatever reason, the silver Vauxhall Astra doesn't. It collides with the fire appliance. It's tipped on its side and pushed into the path of the taxi. The following fire crew stops to help. I just opened the door and uh, I had a big bang. I come out and uh, I see the car, uh, the car like this, the fire engine there, the car on front of the fire alarm, and the and the taxi driver. I, I can't believe it would happen in, in one second. Our BBC cameraman Steve Hubbard was there just moments after it happened and before the other emergency services arrived. The firefighters involved in the crash helped to free the family of five trapped in their own vehicle. They treat them literally on the ground. Although trained to deal with emergencies and people's trauma, they don't normally need colleagues to help with their own. They're extremely distressed. Um, they deal with most type of incidents um, and they're and very capable of doing so. On this occasion, they're, they're extremely upset, some of them in, in tears, to, to see exactly as what has happened, um, particularly when it, they're so unprepared for it. Seven ambulances were called to the scene. In total, 11 people were hurt, including five firefighters. The taxi driver, a man, received a minor injury, and the five people from the car on its side, one is deemed serious, but she is stable, and the three girls in the rear of the car received pelvic and abdominal injuries. The driver of the car also received slight injuries. An investigation is underway to find out if a driver or the traffic lights were at fault. Ironically, the house fire the two crews were racing to wasn't as serious as first thought. Debbie Tubby, BBC Look East, Luton. The business secretary, Lord Mandelson, has told Look East that job cuts at Vauxhall in Luton can't be ruled out. Two and a half thousand workers at the plant were told yesterday that Magna will be their new owner. The Canadian company says it will keep all German plants open but can only guarantee production in Luton until 2013. Well, earlier I spoke to Lord Mandelson, who visited the factory in July. I put it to him that while the German government has secured German jobs, the British government has failed workers in Luton. The German government has not secured all the jobs employed at Opel in Germany. Um, what I believe will be the case is that, just as here, plants won't be closed. Uh, plants won't be closed in Germany either. Uh, but both governments, German and British government, have made clear throughout that whilst we are both prepared to contribute to the financing of this new ownership structure for Opel and Vauxhall going forward, this will not protect every single job. There will inevitably be some change, there will inevitably be uh, some re restructuring, uh, not just in Britain, but in Germany, Spain and the other uh, uh, operating divisions across Europe uh, uh, going forwards. But yesterday it did seem that all the decisions, all the initiative was coming from Germany. You've been accused of being left on the back foot. I spoke to the GM chief executive uh, officer, Fritz Henderson, last night, who called me, uh, who said that GM and its new part owners, uh, Magna, uh, remain committed uh, to Vauxhall's continued production at both their plants uh, at Ellesmere Port and Luton. Well, you sound upbeat there, but the workers in Luton are certainly not upbeat. They're saying this is the worst possible scenario for them. I think the worst possible scenario would be the closure of the plant at Luton uh, with no further uh, uh, owners found. Uh, uh, there are new owners and the plant is to remain open. So I don't quite see why that should be the worst possible scenario. Well, you're talking about the short term, aren't you? What about the long term? There are fears that when a contract to build vans for uh, Renault expires in 2013, that the Luton plant may then shut. 
Yes, and the uh, Magna Chief Executive has told me uh, that they will do everything they can to uh, find further contracts and production uh, for the Luton plant uh, after 2013. And everyone will be working very closely together uh, to pull that off. What other practical steps can you say that you're going to do to reassure those 2,500 workers in Luton who today are feeling that their livelihoods uh, may be hanging in the balance? Uh, the, the fact is that there is oversupply and overproduction in the car industry across the world. Uh, GM uh, has fought for its life, it's pulled through, uh, but in the case of Europe, uh, with new shared ownership with Magna International. Uh, I think we should welcome that uh, today. Uh, the alternative would have been insolvency. We've now saved help save this company uh, from uh, going down in that way and now we shall start talking uh, detailed terms uh, with the new GM Magna owners uh, to see how the British government can help financially uh, to underpin this new ownership structure. Lord Mandelson, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you. A teenager has been arrested after a man was shot dead in Luton last week. 22-year-old Richard Long was shot in the head in Haymarket Road on September the 1st. A 17-year-old boy is being questioned at Hatfield Police Station on suspicion of murder. Look East has been told that Margaret Moran, the Labour MP for Luton South, has been signed off for another month on sick leave. She hasn't been seen in the area since the controversy over her claims for expenses on a home in Southampton. Her absence is beginning to cause concern among her constituents and local politicians. This report from our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair. Over the summer, there's been a lot to worry the people of Luton. Jobs have been under threat at Vauxhall and have been cutting back at the airport. While on the streets, there's been racial tension. But in Luton South, there's been no MP to speak out. I don't want my constituents to think that uh, there's something dodgy or murky. There isn't. This was the last time Margaret Moran was seen in public as she tried to justify her expense claims. Shortly afterwards, the party deselected her, telling her she can't be a candidate at the next election. Ms Moran has been on sick leave ever since. It's just not fair that we haven't got anyone standing in Parliament helping us, banging the drum, giving attention to Luton and all its needs. Elena O'Sullivan is one of her constituents. She believes it's important that at the moment Luton South has a working MP. If she's off sick, then I think she should maybe stand down and take her time off, take her time to recover. How much are people talking about this in Luton? Everyone's talking about it. You've got no representation, have you? So it really needs to be sorted out and quickly. I don't think she's bothered. It wasn't like she was doing much anyway, was she? At the local Conservative Club, the parliamentary candidate for Luton South already feels like an MP. People, he says, are coming to him with serious problems, everything from housing to child abuse. I'm doing what I can, and I'm working with Margaret Moran's office when I can, but the reality is I don't have a staff, I'm not a full-time MP, I've got a day job to do as well. So I'm not equipped to deal with these things. The MP's office appears to be empty. The party says her staff here and in London are handling her workload. But some on the local council feel that's not good enough. It's not right to expect the staff of the uh, MP's uh, office to do the MP's job. And that is what the people of Luton are asking for. They're a member of parliament to give, to give them the service that they have elected her for. Margaret Moran was known to have underlying health problems and on the day that she was deselected she told me that those problems had been exacerbated by all the stress surrounding the whole expenses issue and she'd been told to rest. I now understand that a House of Commons doctor has referred her to a specialist and he has signed her off work for at least the next month. No one from the Labour Party in Luton would be interviewed. They still want to be loyal to their MP. Some believe it's unfair that a person who's clearly unwell should come in for so much criticism. They say they hope she'll be back at work in October. For the people of Luton, it can't come soon enough. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East.